got an exam question walk through here which deals with year 12 equilibrium. So in the question we'll be looking at enthalpy profile diagrams, an energy calculation, the expression for Kc, and an application of Le Chatelier's principle. Remember to give a thumbs up if you like the video, subscribe to stay in touch with future content, and leave a comment if you'd like to see a particular topic covered in a future video. Okay, so here's the question. It's on three slides, so I'll just flick through the slides and you can pause the video, try the question, and then I'll go through the answers. Okay, so part A, we've got to complete the energy profile diagram for the reaction where we have to label the activation energy Ea, the enthalpy change of reaction as delta H, and we've got to put the formulae of the reactants and products onto the relevant part of the diagram. Before I show you the diagram, just the most important bit of information there is the enthalpy change for the reaction is negative, so it's an exothermic reaction and therefore the reactant's enthalpy will be higher than the product's enthalpy. So that's what the diagram is going to look like. Obviously the activation energy is an upwards arrow from the enthalpy of the reactant to the maximum of the curve there. The enthalpy change is a downwards arrow from the reactant to the product's and then the only other thing we have to do is include the formulae of the reactants and products. They're in the equation, so we needed those on the reactants line and those on the products line. So in the next bit of part A, we've got to um, do an energy calculation, and we've got some information here. We've got to give our answer in standard form and an appropriate number of significant figures. I'll come on to that when we get to the final answer. So we're told that 5.10 tonnes of ammonia are converted into NO, calculate the energy released in kilojoules for this conversion. So the first thing we want to do is calculate the moles of ammonia. You should always do that if you're given the mass of a particular chemical. So the moles of ammonia comes out at 300,000 or 3 times 10 to the 5. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to look at the equilibrium and this information here is telling us that when four moles of ammonia react, 905 kilojoules are released. So one mole of ammonia would release a quarter of that, so that's 226.25 kilojoules. So now we can just scale up to what 300,000 moles would release. So we're just going to multiply the moles by the energy per mole, and that gives us this number here. And then obviously that's got to go into standard form and the appropriate number of significant figures. Well, we've got three significant figures for both bits of data. So I'm going to give the answer to three significant figures. And we get 6.79 times 10 to the 7. Part B now. So we've got to write an expression for the equilibrium constant Kc for this equilibrium. So remember Kc is the concentration at equilibrium of the products divided by the reactants but remember the coefficients in the equation become powers so kc is equal to the equilibrium concentration so square brackets for these of no to the power 4 multiplied by the h2o gas to the power 6 and then that's divided by the equilibrium concentration of ammonia to the power 4 multiplied by the equilibrium concentration of oxygen to the power 5. Final part of the question, we've got to predict the conditions of temperature and pressure for a maximum equilibrium yield of nitrogen monoxide. So in other words, what conditions of temperature and pressure are going to favour the forward reaction? So the first thing I would do is look at the key bits of information from the equilibrium. So the enthalpy change sign, that's very, very important. And the number of moles of gas left and right, because obviously that's going to impact on the pressure. So the forward reaction is exothermic. There are more moles of gas on the product side. So we've got 10 moles of gas on the right 
versus nine moles of gas on the left. So with that in mind, a low temperature and a low pressure would favor the forwards reaction. Remember, low temperature always favors the exothermic direction and low pressure favors the side with the most moles. So the last thing we need to do is cover this final bullet point, state and explain how these conditions of low temperature and low pressure could be changed to achieve a compromise between the yield, the rate and any other operational factors. So obviously a low temperature and a low pressure is going to um, give a low rate of reaction, which is obviously not favorable. So they're probably gonna increase the temperature and that's gonna give an increased frequency of collisions. But remember the compromise there is those conditions are gonna send the equilibrium more to the left hand side and obviously give a lower yield. And then finally, any other operational factors would need to consider. Obviously, increasing the temperature is going to increase the energy costs and it's going to lower the yield. Remember, it's going to favor the reverse reaction. Similarly, with the increased pressure. And again, an increase in the pressure would increase a safety risk. So obviously, high pressures are more dangerous um, operational conditions to work in.